Some of you may remember in Variety and Deadline uh, a while ago, headlines ran that a new documentary was coming out about the infamous Star Wars holiday special called A Disturbance in the Force. Well, it's now out and it's available today. And we are really lucky today to have one of the producers of the movie. Uh, you might remember him from directing such films as Fanboys, uh, One Up, the Samuel Jackson, Haley Steinfeld film, Barely Lethal. Hell, the guy even directed a Taylor Swift video. Our friend, Kyle Newman. Kyle, how you doing, yeah. sir? Woo! What's up? Thank you for having me on. Good to have you here, man. First of all, like before we get into the movie, you've been keeping yourself real busy lately. You guys, on top of all that, you are like the D&D &D guy. You're the Dungeons and Dragons guy, and you and a bunch of your friends have been putting out a whole bunch of books. You were actually on the show a couple years ago to talk about one of the books that come out. You guys just did a, a couple more. Can you just tell everybody about those ones you just had put out? We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Guys, you know, as a small business owner, I am finding myself having to be in negotiations all the time, whether it's with new contractors, vendors, or even agencies that represent our company. Now, I don't like to go into these negotiations unarmed, so I found the perfect class on Masterclass, The Art of Negotiation by Chris Voss, a real-life former FBI lead hostage negotiator. Taking this class on Masterclass made me feel a lot more equipped and confident going into all these various negotiations I have to do on a regular basis. Masterclass makes a meaningful gift this season for you and anyone on your list because both of you can learn from the best to become your best, from leadership to effective communication to cooking. Every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insight, and much more. There are over 180 classes to pick from. Everything from filmmaking with Martin Scorsese all the way to cooking with the great Gordon Ramsay. In Masterclass, you will find practical lessons that you can apply to your life and work. This holiday season, give one annual membership and get one free at masterclass.com slash campia. Right now, you can get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash campia. Masterclass.com slash campia. Offer terms apply. We've got the sequel to our New York Times best-selling cookbook. This is, uh, <laughs> I was called Heroes Feast, and this is the, the sequel, Flavors of the Multiverse. And there's actually a, a cooking show based on it right now on Amazon Freebie and Plex, and I'm in all 20 episodes. So they turned it into a cooking show. And then we've got the sequel to our Art and Arcana book. This one's called Lauren Legends. It's gorgeous. This, this chronicles 5th edition D&D, &D, from the ashes of 4th edition up to where we are now. How did it go from 3 million players to 60 million players? Uh, what are those phenomena? What what made it a phenomenon? What are those cultural things that happened in the past twelve years to really transform this game? So, those books are out, and like you said, we're really proud of it. And in the doc space, I'm also direct co-directing the doc on the history of Dungeons and Dragons for Hasbro, uh, approaching the fiftieth anniversary next year. I remember when they we covered that on the show when that announcement came out a while ago. We're excited about that, but but specifically, uh, we're here to talk about. The, the, the new project that you're a producer on, Disturbance in the Force. Let me ask you this, like kind of like a broad question, yeah. but what is it about that holiday special? Because it's been featured in movies and TV shows. Weird Al even has references to it uh, in his music and his videos quite often. What is it about the holiday special? Because normally if something that people consider bad comes out, it becomes quickly forgotten. Why has the holiday special endured in the pop cultural landscape for so long? You know what it is? It's that it's taboo. It's that it was pulled from our grasp, never to be released again. Although in Australia it did, did air six holiday seasons in a row after the initial airing. <laughs> um, but the holiday special aired once and then it was gone. And it was almost like it was wiped from our memories. But then Instagram <laughs> and internet, and social media and everything came back. And so people can talk about it and meme about it. And it hasn't been allowed to disappear by fandom. Uh, I think people have taken it on like a, like a badge of honor to support it or to watch it. It is a rough watch. It's not <laughs> so bad. It's good. It's just boring and it's mystifying. And one of the reasons for doing it was what you said in your intro, you're here to provide context. And that's what we're here to provide is context. So you can watch this thing in a new light. You can understand why and how it was made. Star Wars did not invent the horrible format that is variety television. <laughs> Star Wars was just inserted into it at the tail end of variety's dominance on television at a time when 
you had a few channels and they had to make programming that lasted two hours that had to try to appeal to everyone and satisfy ultimately no one. And Star Wars was jammed into this and as a way to keep Star Wars relevant because George is investing all his own money into making Empire Strikes Back and setting right. up Lucasfilm. And he needs to protect his investment. So he needs to keep Star Wars in the zeitgeist, in pop culture. There's three years between movies. And this was a way for him to do it. So he begrudgingly said yes. And they made this nearly two-hour holiday special. And they thought it was going to be like Rudolph. Frosty air every year and it aired once and it's gone. So John, I think that's why people are interested in it. Cause when you hear about it, you're like, wait, they made a, a holiday special. Wait, rewind, explain this. And all the actors are in this. They all showed up on set and they're in it without guns to their head. So we, we talked to the writers, the directors, we talked to the dancers. We talked to Bob <laughs> Mackey, the costume designer, everybody who was involved in this thing. Plus it has that veneer of pop culture um analysis everyone from from weird al Patton oswald paul Shear, taron killam seth green everyone that you know seth worked with lucasfilm worked with george and he got great insight into george's you know thought process in this and allowing it to happen uh, so all that's in this and it's a it's a really fun movie in an age where most documentaries are absolutely cynical someone has to die someone has to overdose <laughs> billions of dollars have to be lost you know can't we just talk about pop culture in a cool way. And that's, that's what we try to do. And I think that's what these guys pulled off. I mean, kudos to the directors. This is right now sitting at a hundred percent on rotten tomatoes with over 30 reviews, um, audience score through the roof. And it's just a fun, satisfying watch. What, what was the Genesis of this? Like what, how did this whole even project start? Like who came up with the idea? What sparked it? What made it interesting to you? The idea of let's go back and revisit this blight on television history. What was the, the impetus for that? Yeah. The, the interesting thing for me was that this was a period of star Wars and Lucasfilm history. That's rarely talked about. It's forgotten, sometimes choicely forgotten. And uh, you're watching the Genesis. It's like Lucasfilm 1.0. One of our interviewees says um, it's before it was a fully formed entity. So they don't talk about it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. We get into the origins of how Star Wars was marketed. All of this stuff was fascinating to me that Charlie Lippincott, uh, who was PR for Lucasfilm, basically invented a new way to market movies, which we still market movies this way now. We go to conventions in advance. Yeah. We seed it out. We do comic books. We do magazines. We do anything we can to build up the momentum. And this was kind of unheard of at the time, especially a year in advance, putting out a novel, putting out Marvel issues. Um, so we get into all that. But Steve Kozak, one of the co-directors, his father was Bob Hope's manager or agent. And so he knew all these old TV luminaries and um, B. Arthur and all these people that um, <laughs> we thought we could get access to. And Steve then started that, that, um, that process of, of tracking these people down and lining them up. And that's when I got on board in an early stage. Uh, as soon as I heard Star Wars Holiday Special and Doc, I said, I'm, I'm in. Like, I, I want to do anything to help document Star Wars, like I've been doing with Dungeons and Dragons. I want to do this as much as I can with Star Wars, especially lost moments in Star Wars history. So it's Adam F. Goldberg, you know, from the Goldbergs, Muppet Mayhem. He's exec producer. And we all just came on board because we loved it and we wanted to bring it to life. Um, I, I want to throw this in kind of a, as a side thing here. You know, on your IMDb, you have listed as an upcoming project, an untitled vigilante project. How and it says it's it's in pre-production. At least that's what it's listed as. I I am is that is that happening? Is that actually in motion? Like where it's would you find in, the time? No, uh, it's not in pre-production right now. It's something I'm writing actually. Uh, okay, it's, a, it's like a, a deconstruction of the of the vigilante superhero genre. It's um almost like I think we're done with superheroes in many ways. I've been working on this thing for ten years. I was waiting for the time to be right. Um, a movie like Unbreakable is way ahead of its time. This is like another look at hero identity, the way we would actually process it if something was real. I'm, it's almost like if you mix Spotlight and Nightcrawler and Citizen Four and a little bit of Daredevil and a blender. I now remember I, you and I had dinner in Burbank a while ago and you started telling me about this project. I think this is the one you were telling me about. And if so, I'm very it's excited cool. about it. I, I'm still I'd love working on it at the time. And I'm working on something else right now too. Um, that I'm writing to direct. And there's other things I'm casting. I don't know what's going to be next for me. I'm, I'm still in post on the Dungeons and Dragons feature doc for um, Hasbro and E1. So that's that's taking up the focus right now, getting this thing into the world. And then 
we'll see what happens kickoff next year. Well, listen, Disturbance of the Force is now out. Where can, if people, and I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this right now, they're going to go want and go and check this out. Like you see, it's right now, awesome. 100% I'm not of lying. Tomatoes, 100% it's, audience it's score. hilarious. Where can people go and watch this right now? Uh, they have it on Apple. They have it on Google. They have it on Vudu. They have it on Amazon. It's VOD right now. We'll announce our streaming partner probably early next year. It'll be something coming out maybe May the 4th-ish. Um, but for now, the only place to get it, rent or, or own it, is um, on those major major platforms. And you can also, the Blu-ray has been like the number one selling doc for the past two weeks on Amazon. Uh, Blu-ray amazing. and DVD, physical media. Um, so if you're into that, it's beautiful. It's got a great poster. It's got a great score by Carl Prusser. It's really you know, made for not a lot of money, but made with a lot of love. And it's not a mean look at the holiday special. It's easy to take low blows at the holiday special. (laughs) This is really look at it and say, how did this really happen? And who's responsible? And um, have fun with it. Well, Kyle, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, We got to have you back to talk some Dungeons and Dragons uh, real soon. Have a good one. Anne says hello, of course. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Congratulations on the film, man. (laughs) <laughs> life day <laughs> thanks a lot thanks, Kyle guys. Be Take well. care. all the best ladies and gentlemen that was Kyle Newman and we're so glad that he uh, took a second you guys know I don't like to do I, I stopped doing celebrity interviews but I'll make an exception for a buddy of mine especially when they're doing fun stuff right uh, someone just bought the blu-ray Oh, did you? <laughs> did you just <laughs> about to get delivered Friday? Friday, this. <laughs> it's on its way. Ray buying it up. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today, so it'll be there when you need it.